there. In this lab, we will go ahead and set up Windows 10 in our virtual environment. So to start out, we want to create a new virtual machine. We'll customize it. We'll do 11. Now, this is going to be the tricky thing. So what we're going to do is we want to install it later. Third option here, if you're using VMware Workstation. We're going to choose Windows, but we're going to choose Windows 8. And we're going to call it Windows 10 Lab. Next, we'll give it two cores, give it four gigs of RAM, we'll use NAT, we'll use S LSI, SCSI the disk actually we don't need well yeah 60 gigs allocate it now and store it as a single file we'll go ahead and we'll also change that now again this is just strictly for me you can set it wherever you like So since this is going to be a 60 gig uh, virtual hard drive, it's going to take a lot longer than the 15 gig Ubuntu drive. So once this finishes back up, we'll go ahead and continue with the rest of the installation. Okay, so we went ahead. It's done creating the disk. Here we are. See, so we want to go to our CD DVD. We want to make sure that we have our proper ISO image loaded. We we'll make sure it's connected to power on. Press OK, and then we'll start her up. And here we go. So now we're going to go through basic setup as if we put a disk drive in. It won't be quite as automated as an easy install, but we just simply click Next, Install, and then we just simply go through the regular Windows 10 installation as if it was on a normal computer. So here it asks us for our CD key. Now remember, you can get the CD key the same place that you did when you downloaded the ISO. When it's entered in, we click Next. We accept. Next. Choose Custom. Total size of the unallocated space should be the exact same size as what we set up our hard drive to be, 60 gigs, which is correct. And now it'll go ahead and install Windows for us. So while this was installing, I got a little message down here saying to VMware tools enables many features, blah, 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 blah. Install tools. We definitely want to install these tools, but we don't want to do it just yet. So we'll wait for this installation to get done, then we'll work on the tools. So you may be wondering why I chose Windows 8 when we're clearly installing Windows 10. And the reason I chose that, because if you choose Windows 10, the install will bomb every time. It'll say there's a product ID and it can't read it and it'll never get past it. And if you choose other, and try and install it like that it'll install and it'll work but you won't be able to get sound and your network adapter will not work whatsoever so yeah don't go that way choose windows 8 it'll save yourself a big headache okay so here we go we can set up some customized settings uh we can turn pretty much everything off here um but the main important one is the smart screen. Turn, make sure you turn that one off. Even if you don't turn anything else off, go ahead, turn that one off because that'll save you a lot. And the reason being is we're using this specifically for malware. If that's on, it's just gonna make getting out malware that much more difficult. So go ahead and disable that and keep it going. And here we got a couple more um, options well I I own this uh, next and then it 
once the Microsoft account, you don't have to do that. You can skip that skip. And here we go. So I'm going to make everything the same as I did on my Linux one. So Ron, admin, admin. And of course, again, I don't, you know, advocate using really ridiculously easy passwords, but in this case, it's a test system that we'll be using specifically for reverse engineering malware. And I don't need a hint, so I'm just going to click next. Okay, apparently I do need a hint, so we'll just say A. And now it's just going through its regular setup. So once this is get, gets done, we'll go ahead and we'll finish off our configuration of Windows. And here we are. Is there a reason? Well, you can click on it, you can close it, you can do whatever you want. So we're good to go. We got our little network going, we got network access, we got sound, we got everything going the way we want it to go. We'll close the Windows feedback thing. Now, okay, yep, I know, there's a store, wonderful. Okay, so now we're ready to install our tools. So in order to do this, it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna load it into your CD-ROM. So there it is. Click on there. We'll run setup. Yep. And now we're going to run our VMware tools. This will make the Windows experience a billion times better. Uh, VirtualBox has its own thing called um, Guest Editions. If you're using that, I would also suggest using those those add-ons. So this is just typical next next install type deal. Okay, we can finish this guy off. And it wants us to restart, so we'll say, yep, let's go ahead and restart. Oh, okay, we restarted. Here we're at our login screen. We'll just click and pass it up. We'll log in. We'll make a couple more adjustments here. And then we'll get ready to begin our next video, which is going to be configuring our Windows environment more so towards our lab. Yep, there we go, control panel. So then just right click on the start, go to control panel. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna set my uh, UAC, I wanna turn that off. I don't like it and it does sometimes interfere with some of the tools I wanna use. So I'm going to turn that thing off and be happy about it. Okay, so if you've noticed, here's that Microsoft Edge browser. A new browser, not sure if you've heard about it, but here you go. It is blazing fast, a billion times better than IE. And let's, I'm going to mess around with this for a little bit. So actually, I'm going to mess around with it for a little bit in the next video because the next video we're going to go and get some of the tools that we need and make some of the configurations that we need in order to get our Windows Lab up and running properly the way we want it.